All right, guys. Once again, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous. We are talking a seriously over-the-top beautiful September day here in the collapse of everything. Our September 2024 might end up being perhaps the single most beautiful month of my entire life life and uh, it is now we are one third of the way through this gorgeous month it is a tuesday september 10th 2024 and i have a lot going on in my fall chores so yeah fairly short chronicle today i believe once again i i, I just might as well team up with eric lee from medium.com who has just been recently has just been hitting them out of the park with uncovering these uh, these essays and articles written by other people and then he comes on and comments on them and uh, it was just a few days ago that I or more correctly I think it might have been my evil twin who was uh, talking about Chris Hedges the avowed socialist uh, Chris Hedges uh, view of the upcoming election and I mentioned uh, in, in that rant that I wish Chris Hedges, when he was th when he throws all these words around, socialist, communal, communist, capitalist, and uh, especially fascist, what is his definition? And I uh, mentioned in there that that I have always had a very oversimplified definition of fascism apparently i have uh, uh, it does happen uh, apparently i have been wrong in using my use of the word fascist and i just thought all of these little limp dick lefties were just throwing the word around too recklessly but uh, uh apparently not uh, i i just always considered he, he, basically, any put, you know, talking about politicians being fascist, which is when the term usually comes up, is I just uh, basically lumped in any politician, you know, who let the global corporatocracy lead them around by. Uh, a ring in their nose was a fascist. That's when, when you just hand over uh, your own political beliefs in an entire uh, government, uh, and I use that term loosely, over to the global corporatocracy, uh, that you are a, a, a fascist. So my evil twin what has been calling Kamala Harris and Donald Trump fascist because they are both, you know, being led around by the global corporatocracy by a ring in their nose, just like Joe Biden and Barack Obama and all the rest. I've been calling them all a bunch of damn fascists uh, since I was about 18 years old. But, uh... So I ask in that rant, I really wish Chris Hedges would define the term fascist because he calls, of course, he calls Donald Trump a fascist. Uh, you know, Chris Hedges being a socialist, he is calling Donald Trump a fascist, but not going there with Kamala Harris, calling Kamala Harris a corporatist which a corporatist is kind of a, I guess, what I, what, when I've been using the word fascist, maybe I've been, should have just been saying corporatist, or as Andy the Gardener said, she's a neoliberalist, Sam. Uh, is it that hard to understand? But anyway, 
So I have had the definition of fascism on my mind, as I'm sure a lot of us have recently. And Eric Lee has come up with, in a few days ago, and uh, here on medium.com, but is it fascism? What does the word mean? And when is it proper to apply it? So, uh, Eric has some fun in the second half of this, uh, uh, of his essay when he takes over explaining why he is an eco-fascist. He is a, a apparently, a, you know, an unapologetic, unrepentant eco-fascist. He calls himself one, just like I call myself an eco-Nazi. But uh, the first half of this essay, before he picks up on it, and, and uh, as fun as that was, we're not going to be reading Eric Saf. He is bringing to our attention this writer named Massimo Pigliucci. Massimo Pigliucci is professor of philosophy at City College. I don't know what city that would be. He is an evolutionary biologist, a skeptical inquirer, and a student of Greco-Roman practical philosophy. He is the author of How to Be a Stoic and the Quest for Character. This offering from July 31st, 2024 is offered for your consideration and uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to put the link to the article. Uh, but what is fascism? From uh, his Substack site titled "The Philosophy Garden: Stoicism and Beyond." So take it away, Massimo Pigliucci. And tell us what fascism means. And I am not going to read the entire uh, essay here. I'm going to uh, read the beginning and the end of it. And you can go on the link and read all of the stuff in the middle. We're going to read the opening and the closing of the essay. Okay. To open... For the last several years, both within and outside of the United States, there has been a lot of talk about fascism. The word, naturally enough, is always used in a derogatory manner, is not even the most fascist among contemporary individuals, well, not counting Eric Lee, and movements actually want to be addressed that way. But what does it mean to be a fascist exactly? Okay, the word fascist itself comes from the decision by Benito Mussolini in 1919 to adopt the fascio as symbol of his new movement, which officially became a party two years later and seized power in Italy in 1922, capitulating only in 1943, near the end of the European campaigns of World War II. And I need to uh, grab a dollar bill, uh, if I have a dollar bill. Uh, out of, uh, I don't know, it's the, I guess it's the presidential seal. It's one of these things uh, that, that the, you know, these New World Order uh, Illuminati people are always pointing out the uh, presidential seal showing the bundle of sticks, the fascio, which is a, basically a bundle of sticks or a bundle of arrows. Like, what the hell is that? 
And this is where these New World Order Illuminati conspiracy wackos uh, point to the U.S. presidential seal that, the, you know, the founding fathers were fascist and the U.S. government has been uh, a fascist government uh, ever since the presidential seal uh, was created. And this is probably part of the reason that I got thrown off by by it. So if anybody thinks that about the presidential seal, uh, we have a rude awakening here. The fascio, or the bundle, represented the power of the tribunes of the plebes in the ancient Roman Republic derived from an even earlier tradition connected with the, Etru with the Etruscans. The same symbol was then reused. My computer is bouncing all around. Um, the same symbol, that this bundle of sticks or arrows or whatever uh, that you still see today, uh, was then used during the French Revolution and the Italian War of National Liberation in order to represent the power of the people. The power of the people. It is therefore ironic and somewhat shrewd that Mussolini adopted it to epitomize the spirit of his autarkic system of government. So, uh, you know, it was, uh, didn't even exist as a word uh, until 1919, uh, well after the uh, U.S. presidential seal uh, had been designed to represent the power of the people. Anyway, I just want to uh, correct one of these New World Order Illuminati conspiracy, wacky conspiracy theories that even I apparently was still suffering from. Okay, what about the common dictionary definition of the word? A common dictionary definition of fascism runs something like the following, quote, an authoritarian and nationalistic right-wing system of government and social organization. Close quote. My Apple dictionary helpfully adds, quote, the term fascism was first used for the totalitarian right-wing nationalist regime of Mussolini in Italy from 1922 to 1943, the regimes of the Nazis in Germany and Franco in Spain were also fascist. Fascism tends to include a belief in the supremacy of one national or ethnic group, you know, and we're, and we're, and we're talking white folks here, uh, a contempt for democracy, an insistence on obedience to a powerful leader, and a strong demagogic approach, close quote. Now, we are getting somewhere. So far, we have the following elements, you know, to represent uh, fascism. Authoritarianism, nationalism, right-wing ideology, contempt for democracy, demagogy, you know, holding up one person uh, as some sort of demigod, and a single supreme leader. As the dictionary observes, Nazism and Francoism 
together with similar regimes in other times and places like the one set up by Pinochet in Chile were all examples of fascism. And then many more are listed here and, and he links you over to a long list of fascist regimes. Why? If we look again at the list above, we see that the very same characteristics, except for the rather unhelpful, quote, right-wing ideology, also mark dictatorial or totalitarian regimes that we usually associate with the left. And, 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 and anyway, guys, I'm going to skip all of this. He, he, uh, he goes, he breaks off here, and he uh, spends a lot of time explaining that left, quote, there are plenty of leftist regimes that are rock-solid fascist. So uh, this fellow uh, does not buy in to the fact that only right-wingers, uh, i.e. In, uh, in this country at least, the Republican Party, or what uh, you know who has turned the Republican Party into, can be fascist to understand that there are plenty of, quote, lefty fascists in the history books. Uh, okay, then I'm going to skip over uh, all of the stuff in the middle and get over it. Okay, yes, yes. Uh, and then he is centering a lot more on the aspect of the totalitarian regime is uh, more important than right-wing ideology. A totalitarian regime is one that attempts to subordinate every act of the individual and every aspect of society to a particular state-promoted ideology. Both Nazism, you know, on the right and Stalinism on their left were examples of totalitarianism. Yes, uh, fascism, according uh, to this, um, to this, uh, guys, it, 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 anyway, it gets too complicated because this dude is quoting, uh, he goes and spends half of his article quoting another article, and I would completely lose you guys. So anyway, this is a, a fellow named Eco. I do like his name, Eco. I do not know if Eco... Uh, is this person's first or last name. But anyway, he goes and spends half his time talking about a fellow named Eco. I love that name. At some point, he gives us Eco's first name or last name, but whoever the hell Eco is, this fellow really thinks Eco uh, whoever Eco is, I have no idea uh, what his uh, resume is to make him the expert on fascism, but this fellow really likes it. Eco concludes his famous essay on or fascism, i.e. the archetypal fascism. The archetypal fascism with a catalog of 12 points that we can use as a checklist to see whether a particular regime we may be concerned about. 
is an instance of fascism. I am presenting this checklist below for your practical use. There is no particular meaning to the sequence of criteria. It is simply the one used by the uh, mysterious eco, but it would take me 20 minutes to find out who the hell eco is. Okay, eco's criterion. Number one, a cult of tradition. Can you, 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 a cult of tradition huh? make America great again? Rejection of modernity. We're going to come back to some of these in a minute. Not meaning what it means in the Doomer sense. Action for action's sake. Disagreement, you know, with the the leader of the gang is treason. Fear of difference. Appeal to a frustrated middle class. How about cultivation of conspiracy theories? Supporters feel humiliated by the wealth of their perceived enemies. Pacifism is considered treasonous. Contempt for the weak. You know them immigrants. We are the best people in the world. Number 11, cult of heroes. And number 12, machismo dis disdain for women as well as for non-standard sexual habits. Okay. Most of these entries are self-explanatory, but a few may benefit from a quick commentary. Number two, for instance, rejection of modernity. This is not to be equated with rejection of technology. The Nazis were not Luddites. Rather, what is being spurned by fascists is the sort of modern ideals that emerge from the Enlightenment. The use of reason and science for the betterment of humankind. Fascism is fundamentally a cult of irrationality. Okay, number three, action for action's sake is typical of anti-intellectualism epitomized by the infamous saying, those who can't do, teach. When you do without thinking about what you are doing and why, action becomes destructive rather than constructive. Number five, fear of difference, means that the fascist ideal society is ethnically homogenous because anyone who looks different is perceived as a potential threat. Xenophobia is considered a virtue. Number eight concerns the notion that supporters of the movement and its leader need to feel humiliated by the wealth of their perceived enemies, be they the Jews, always a convenient target, or latte drinking and electric car driving liberal elites, otherwise known as childless cat ladies. Finally, regarding number 11, the cult of heroes, Eco writes, quote, the or fastest hero is impatient to die. In his impatience, he more frequently sends other people to death, close quote. The rest, as I said, ought to be self-explanatory. So, what is all of the above good for? The next time you hear the word fascism being casually thrown around, 
consider whether it actually fits the situation. You know, when you hear some uh, clueless moron calling Kamala Harris, the childless cat lady, a, uh, a fascist, uh, whenever you hear, you know, some clueless moron who doesn't know what the word fascist means, casually throwing the term around, consider whether it actually fits the situation and make sure not to overuse it yourself or it will gradually lose meaning. If you live in a place where there is a suspicion that a fascist government is being developed or a potentially fascist party is surging at the elections, use ECO's checklist to see how much you should really be worried and how much you may need to get involved in order to forestall further undoing of the democracy you currently enjoy. Don't forget, both Mussolini and Hitler initially got elected by perfectly legal and democratic means. And, uh, as I said, then Eric Lee picks up from there. Uh, explaining why uh, he is uh, <laughs> he is an eco-fascist. But I do want to segue just before I go since it is Tuesday, uh, September 10th, while some people, there's some sort of debate going on uh, tonight, some sort of debate that I've heard about, but if you have no interest in listening to that debate, uh, Sandy over at Environmental Coffee House is offering an antidote and she is going to be centering on a, a long article from The Guardian, uh, Project 2025 is an existential threat. So if you want to uh, learn more about uh, how fascist governments rise to power. You might want to turn, tune in to Sandy's show about Project 2025. It's probably the single most fascist uh, document you have ever heard. And I don't think I am throwing the term around loosely. Or if you really want to see the difference, I guess, between a fascist and a corporatist, you can go on to those debates. But uh, I, for one, will be sitting out the debates like I will be sitting out the election because being an eco-Nazi myself, uh, corporist or fascist, it makes little difference from an eco-Nazi perspective. Uh, Donald Trump or or uh, Kamala Harris, as someone said recently, is the difference between vanilla ice cream and French vanilla ice cream as far as the global corporatocracy uh, who leads both of our candidates around by the nose is concerned and the election of either one of them will be will do absolutely nothing to stem the collapse of this planet and the election of either one of them will only ramp it up so uh, I will be chronicling the collapse just the same no matter who wins the corporatist or the fascist 
your choice. Well, I ended up going right to 30 minutes anyway. Bye, guys.